Boardroom's unique selling proposition is that it offers a set of tools that no other platform on the market offers, each of which is designed to help e-commerce merchants to save time, make better data-driven decisions, and grow their organic traffic. Boardroom's first category of features is in the area of multi-channel data analytics, and so Boardroom integrates data from various platforms. And we can see on the dashboard here that we have three Shopify stores and one Amazon Seller Central account, and our users can connect an unlimited number of e-commerce stores into their dashboard. So if I click Actions here, then Sync a Store. So I'll show you how to connect a Shopify store in this video very quickly. Uh, from here, I'm going to copy a Shopify URL and paste it in here and add a brand name. Uh, I'm going to call it Chuck's Ski Shop. I'll click Next. I'll be directed to Shopify where I can install this app. Onto my Shopify store, I'm installing Boardroom and then I'm redirected back into the Boardroom dashboard here and we can see that uh, Boardroom is uploading my data now. We'll send the user an email once this process is done. But it's that easy, it really takes just a couple of seconds to connect a new e-commerce store into Boardroom. Similarly, Boardroom also integrates with advertising platforms like Google Ads and uh, Meta Ads, so Facebook and Instagram. And uh, our users can uh, similarly click Sync Ad Account. It's gonna take them to their My Data Sources page here in Boardroom. Clicking Sync New Ad Account will pull up a form that will look like this, and they can choose which advertising platform they want to connect with. They can tie the advertising data to a specific brand, and then they can click Sign In with Google or Sign In with Meta, and then they'll get redirected back here into Boardroom where they can choose the specific advertising account and connect it. And once again, they get a message saying that Boardroom will send them an email once that advertising data has finished. Uh, once we've got all of that data in one place here in the Boardroom dashboard, uh, we can see that we've got some basic metrics calculated here on the uh, homepage and users can actually customize their homepage and choose which four metrics they want to display here. So I can toggle these here, choose something else there. I can change the order as well, save that, and then the page will simply refresh with those new metrics uh, showing up here. Now, um, this is just the homepage, but Boardroom has tons of different analytics features here. And so, for example, I'll take you to the overview page here in Boardroom. We can see that uh, there are tool tips for every single metric, so you can tell exactly how each metric is calculated. Once again, this page is customizable, so users can choose which metrics are appearing here and what order they appear on the page. Um, I also didn't mention this before, but you can connect Google Analytics to Boardroom as well, so you can get traffic-related metrics here. Scrolling down, Boardroom has other neat data visualization tools like charts and graphs that are interactive and filterable here, so you can totally manipulate this data and look at exactly what you want to see uh, here in Boardroom. So this is a very helpful way to get insights about the trends of your data over time. Scrolling up here, I just want to mention that Boardroom also has an exportable scheduled report feature. So users can fill this form out and then uh, perhaps make it a recurring report so that on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis, Boardroom will send a report to one or multiple inboxes. Something that I want to show is that uh, on this products page, we can see more data visualization tools at the top. We're highlighting the top products for this e-commerce brand. And then we also have these little grids. We call them our power grids here. Uh, they offer a spreadsheet-like interface. There we go. They can create filters very easily. Uh, they can drag and drop to change the order. They can sort by any column they want. They can control which columns are visible here. They can create saved views so they can come back and reload different sets of filters and views later on if there are reports that they like to run, and they can export this view into Excel or CSV. Okay, I'm kind of stapling this last little segment here onto the end of the reporting and analytics section of the video, and I just wanted to flash up some of our other pages in case it's helpful for the video. So for example, we have an advertising analytics page where users can be filter and get their key metrics across different advertising uh, platforms and campaigns and ad sets and advertisements. Our inventory analytics page highlights key inventory metrics like fastest and slowest selling products and stock out insights that forecast when products will go out of stock and tons of other metrics here in the Power Grid. Our customer list page shows average customer lifetime value related metrics, as well as a full list of the user's customers, including tons of useful data about each customer, like their geographic location and how long they've been a customer and how many orders they've had and how many discounts they've used and how many refunds they've had and their average order value and all of that good stuff. Sales page shows a power grid of every single sale and all of the details that are included there, tons of data points about each sale. Again, this is totally uh, filterable and sortable and exportable using our awesome power grid functionality. Last thing I want to mention here on the reporting and analytics side is that we have some fun customer analytics features like this customer heat map, which is going to show you a visual representation of where in the world your customers are physically located. Okay, I think that's all the time I have to cover our reporting and analytics feature. The second feature I want to talk about is our keyword research feature. So one of those that I want to talk about. So coming over to our keyword research AI page, uh, the way this works is users simply have to uh, enter in a single keyword about their brand and click generate. So let's say they're selling snowboards on their store. They might enter that keyword and click generate. Now we in the background are using an AI prompt to pull in a list of dozens of potential keywords for this user's brand. And we've got a list here now of 45 keywords. And for each one, we have the monthly Google search volume, the cost per click to advertise on Google, 
the competition score of zero to 100 from an advertising perspective, and then the SEO ranking difficulty here. So this is a useful feature for SEO focused brands and people who want to use blogging to try to attract organic traffic on their website, for example. Um, what we recommend our users do is favorite promising keywords. Uh, maybe you want to sort by SEO ranking difficulty or search volume to identify those. Um, when you click the star icon, it drops these keywords down here into your list of favorites. You can just type in another keyword idea here, generate a new report, and use these favorites to kind of build out your content creation plan. And it's closely linked with the next feature I want to talk about, which is our blog creation and optimization feature. So let's say you've identified a really great keyword like snowboarding boots that you want to rank for on Google search. You might click create blog post. That's going to take you over here to our blog creation page and boardroom. And you'll notice that our primary keyword that we just researched is automatically plugged into this field. Next, we can set, have the AI suggest a topic for this blog post automatically. There we go. We can choose a tone for this blog post that matches my brand, or I can even enter a custom tone here if I want to, uh, add a desired word count, and then any in additional instructions here. And, uh, notice on the left side, we have previously created posts that are in draft, scheduled, or those that have been already published to my website. For now, though, I'm just going to click Generate here. Over here, we get uh, a preview of this newly created blog post. I can click See More to just read the entire post, but we don't stop there. So we give users an SEO editor here. And now you can see that um, what we're doing is on the left side, we have a content editor. On the right side, we have an SEO score out of 100 that we've given this post, as well as a list of optimization tips for this user for how to optimize this post based on SEO best practices. So for example, um, we need to add a meta description here on the input tab. So I can come over to the input tab. I can have AI draft a meta description automatically. I can come over here. Um, And let's just refresh the SEO score now after doing the, a couple of those tips. And we can see that it went from 59 up to 69. And we can see that those uh, tips have been satisfied and marked green now. I also want to show you uh, the capabilities of this editor here. Um, you could add text using a custom AI prompt here. You can actually insert products directly from your connected Shopify store by clicking Add Products. You can search for uh, a product from your store. I'm going to choose a couple of products here. And then using these controls down here, I can customize this widget however I want. But for now, I'm just going to click Add to Blog. And you can see that's going to plug in those products directly into the body of this post. Um, and this is going to have a live link to the product page. And the idea here is that this process will help users to monetize the organic traffic. That I'm going to refresh the SEO score again. It should go up a little bit more. Cool. Now we're at 88. We're in the green high zone here. I'm going to go ahead and click Publish to Shopify here to show you that you can actually publish this post directly to Shopify in just a couple of clicks here by choosing the blog. You can add a cover image. You can uh, edit the URL slug here if you want to. You could schedule this post to be published at a later date if you would like here very quickly and easily. Um, our users love to create a bunch of blog posts in bulk. Or you can click Publish Now, and this is going to actually publish this post directly to Shopify pretty much immediately. Here it is. So you can maybe cut to this part in the video if you guys chose to show this blog post live on the website. It would look something like that. Another really great SEO feature that we offer is actually an optional premium add-on service to help our users acquire high-quality backlinks. So you can see this Get Backlinks option here uh, next to this recently published post. I can click that, and it's going to take me to this order form where I can, as a user, choose uh, a domain authority, uh, a website niche, and uh, how many links I would like. And then Boardroom will actually reach out to um, websites within the selected niche and secure a backlink to this user's website. This can have a huge impact on the customer's domain authority. And do have an SEO audit page here in Boardroom. So um, users can actually enter in any website URL here and run a report that's going to show them that website's domain authority, backlinks, traffic, website age, the speed of the website, um, a backlink report as well, uh, sorted by domain authority. So you can kind of do some SEO tracking for your own website or some competitor research. The last thing I wanted to show you guys is this um, over to content creation here, we can see our content creation templates. And uh, But what I want to show you in this last part of the video is our product photography studio. So if I click product photos here, I'm taken to this page where I can swap out the background of any one of my product photos here using AI. I can do this by uploading an image to start with, or I can search for a, a connected product on one of my stores. So if I, for example, choose um, one of these products here, I get a preview of the current product image there. And then I can scroll down and choose a template to replace this background with, or I can even type in a custom prompt here as well. We have basic and advanced templates, but for choose a basic template here. So I'll scroll down, and since this is a snowboard, I'm going to choose snow-capped mountains. Um, I can change the padding here if I want to, which is just going to make the product larger or smaller. And then I'm going to click Generate Image. There are no limits to the number of images that our users can generate. And there we go. Pretty cool. So this is something that you could use in a social media post or an advertisement or even directly on a product page. So we allow our users to then publish this product image directly to the selected product. You can set it as the main image or add it to the back uh, you know, as a backup image on the product page as well. But either way, I click publish here and it's going to automatically just publish this directly into the Shopify store. And once again, I'll take you over there just so you can see that indeed this new product image has been made into the main image of this particular product page.